In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the first derivative test to determine the relative extrema of a function. So here is a relative minimum, and this is a relative maximum. And this graph has no relative minimum or maximum. So let's talk about these graphs. Now for the first one, on the upper left corner. Notice that of the left side of the minimum, the function is decreasing. So it's decreasing when the first derivative is negative. And here the function is increasing. It's increasing when the first derivative is positive. So according to the first derivative test, if the sign of the first derivative changes from negative to positive, then you have a minimum. In order to have a maximum, the function has to be increasing first and then decreasing later. So then the first derivative has to change from positive to negative. Now for the other two graphs, the sign will not change. Notice that the function is increasing and then it stops. The slope is zero at this point and then it increases again. So notice that the sign doesn't change. And for the second one, it's always decreasing. So therefore, the sign doesn't change either. So if the sign of the first derivative does not change, there is no relative maximum or relative minimum. But if it changes from negative to positive, then according to the first derivative test, a minimum exists. Or if it changes from positive to negative, then there's a, a local maximum or a relative maximum. Now let's work on some practice problems. Consider the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 5. So go ahead and use the first derivative test to determine the relative extrema of this function. So the first thing we need to do is find the first derivative. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of 4x is 4, and for a constant is 0. Once you have the first derivative, set it equal to 0. And I'm going to factor out a 2. And so I can see that my critical number is x equals 2. If you set the factor x minus 2 equal to 0, then x is equal to 2. Now once you have the critical number, make a sign chart. So draw a number line and put the critical number on it. And then plug in some test points. So to the right of 2, let's say at 3, if we plug it into the first derivative, will it give us a positive number or a negative number? 3 minus 2 is positive. Now if we plug in a number less than 1, I mean less than 2, like 1, let's see what's going to happen. 1 minus 2 is negative, so that will give us a negative result. So notice that the first derivative, it changes from negative to positive. So on the left side, the function is decreasing, and on the right side, it's increasing. And so this correlates to a relative minimum. So we have a relative minimum at x equals 2. Now, to find the relative minimum value, you could plug it back into the function and get the y-coordinate. So f of 2 is equal to 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 5. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 minus 8 is negative 4, plus 5, that's 1. So as an ordered pair, x is 2, y is 1. So these are the coordinates of the relative minimum. So the relative minimum is located at x equals 2, but it has a value of 1. Now, let's try this one. Let's say that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 12x. Go ahead and use the first derivative test to determine all of the relative extrema in this function. So we're going to follow the same process. We're going to find the first derivative, set it equal to 0, and get the critical points. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and the derivative of 12x is 12. 
Now let's take out the GCF, which is 3. 3x squared divided by 3 is x squared. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. And so we could factor x squared minus 4 using the difference of squares technique. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 4 is 2. One is going to be positive and the other will be negative. So we have two critical numbers, positive 2 and negative 2. So now let's create a sign chart. And let's put the critical numbers in ascendant order. So let's pick a number that's greater than 2. Let's try 3. 3 plus 2 is positive. 3 minus 2 is positive. If you multiply two positive numbers, it will give you a positive result. Now if we pick a number that's between negative 2 and 2, let's try 0 for example. 0 plus 2 is positive. 0 minus 2 is negative. A positive number times a negative number, that will give you a negative number. And then if we pick a number that's less than negative 2, like negative 3, negative 3 plus 2, that's negative 1. So that's negative. Negative 3 minus 2 is another negative number. If you multiply two negative numbers, you'll get a positive number. Now let's get rid of some stuff. So which of these two critical points is the relative maximum? And which one is the relative minimum? So let's consider negative 2. The function is increasing and then it decreases. So that is a maximum. And for positive 2, it's a decrease and it's a negative first and then it's increase and it's positive later. That is a minimum. And that's a quick and simple way to determine the relative extrema of the function. So now let's get the y coordinates. So let's start with f of positive 2. 2 to the third, that's 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. And 12 times 2 is 24. So 8 minus 24 is negative 16, which is a relatively low number. So that can correspond to the minimum. Now let's try f of negative 2. So it's a negative 2 to the third minus 12 times negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, that's negative 8. Negative 12 times negative 2 is positive 24. So this gives us positive 16. So the maximum is located at x equals negative 2, but it has a value of 16. And the minimum is positive 2, negative 16. So we can see that the minimum has a much lower value than the maximum. And so that's it for this particular example. That's how you can use the first derivative test to determine the relative extrema of this function. Let's work on one more example. Given the function 3x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 6x squared, find the relative extrema of this function. So just like before, let's start with the first derivative. The derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. And the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And for x squared, the derivative of that is 2x. So 3 times 4 is 12. 8 times 3 is 24. And 6 times 2 is 12. So let's set it equal to 0. And let's begin by taking out the GCF. The greatest common factor is 12x. So 12x cubed divided by 12x is x squared. Negative 24x squared divided by 12x is negative 2x. And then 12x divided by itself is 1. So how can we factor this trinomial? So we need to find two numbers that multiply to 1 but add up to negative 2. And so that's going to be negative 1 and negative 1. So this is going to be x minus 1 times x minus 1. So the first derivative is going to be 12x times x minus 1 squared. So I'm just going to rewrite that up here. So let's set each factor equal to 0. So if we set 12x equal to 0, the first critical number is x is 0. And if we set x minus 1 squared 
equal to 0, we can clearly see that when x is 1, the whole thing will equal 0. So we have two critical numbers, 0 and 1 in this example. Now let's make a sign chart. And let's put the critical numbers in ascendant order. So the critical numbers are 0 and 1. Now let's pick a number that's greater than 1. Let's try 2. So 12 times 2, that's a positive number. And 2 minus 1 squared is going to be positive. Now what do you think the next one is going to be? What sign should we put here? So we're traveling across this particular critical number. And notice that the multiplicity is even. If the multiplicity is even, it will not change sign. But for this one, the multiplicity is odd, so it's going to change sign across the 0, which means this is going to be negative. If you plug in, let's say, 0 0.5, 12 times 0 0.5 is positive. 0 0.5 minus 1 is negative, but once you square it, it's positive. If you multiply two positive numbers, you'll get a positive result. But let's say if you plug in negative 1, negative 1 minus 1 is negative, but squared is positive. 12 times negative 1 is negative. A negative times a positive will give us the negative result. And so you could use the multiplicities to figure out the rest if you know the first sign. So you don't have to use three test points, only one. Now, looking at this particular critical number, it changes from negative to positive. So we have a minimum at 0. And at 1, it's increasing and then it increases again. So we don't have a minimum or maximum at 1. So we just have a minimum at 0. And to find a y value, if we plug in 0 into this, there's no constants. Everything contains an x, so y would also be 0. So the minimum is located at the origin. It's 0, 0 for this particular example. And so that's it for this video. Now you know how to use the first derivative test to determine the relative extrema of a function.